Wow. What can I say? Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, team. Let's just bless them. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you. It's quite daunting having the first session, um, but I'm so grateful for it. It's, it's such a privilege to be here, and I'm so grateful that we could all make it safely. Um, if you're here and you're safe, Give yourself a hand. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this awesome opportunity to be together as a church and to really seek God's face. And as you've heard, our theme for this weekend is going to be encountering Jesus. And I, I just want to sort of pray, Lord, thank you that we can come and press into such an awesome theme. What is more important in life than encountering you? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I had my first encounter with Jesus at a young age of about 16. Um, in a youth meeting in the town that I grew up in. And that encounter, though it was seemingly unassuming at the time, it was so powerful, it changed me forever. Today, I'm not the person I used to be, and those, that encounter set me on a path which has certainly made me who I am today. It went on to shape the rest of my life and opened up the floodgates to many, many more encounters, both personally and together in wonderful times of worship like we've had this, this, this evening. Thank you. It's shaped my thinking. It's molded how I feel about myself and the way that I view the world and see others. My very identity has been formed as a result of encounters with Jesus. Now I want you to know that, but I want to also just put that out there, that we've come together to have encounters with Jesus. Are we expectant that the same will happen in our lives from this day on? That tomorrow, next week, next month... We're not going to be the same as we are today. As we encounter Jesus, I want us to come with that expectation that we will be changed. Okay? Is that all right? Okay, good. All right, let's carry on then and, and unpack this a little bit more. What is an encounter? Well, I kind of looked at a little bit, bit of a de definition and and. I came up with this, an encounter is to come upon, or to meet with, or to grapple with someone in an unexpected manner. The experience may be brief, but it is certainly memorable, and it usually has a significant and lasting effect. Okay? How's that for a definition? Is that all right? An encounter? It's not just a brief, um, oh yeah, you're right. That's good. And it's, it's good to be friendly and to greet one another. But I'm not talking about that kind of just passing one another like ships in the night. I'm talking about an encounter that leaves an impression. Okay? In Wild Bullet Church, um, We are fortunate to hold the Bible in very high regard. And I'm so glad that we started off this evening with some excellent scriptures. Thank you, Chris. It was awesome, wasn't it? Scriptures that just highlight the character of God and show us a little bit more about who it is that we're encountering. And um, we believe that the Word of God is the inspired gift to us that reveals more and more of who, who, who he is to us. And in it, we read of many examples of encounters with Jesus. There's lots of them. 
Every gospel has tons of encounters that Jesus had with people. So much so that I really found it hard to choose one to focus in on tonight. <laughs> and so I'm not going to do that. All the good ones are taken anyway. Thanks, Raj. But um, no, it's, it's, it really is going to be good to be served this weekend by excellent men and women of God who love Jesus and know what it is to encounter Jesus. And Carolyn and Raj and Simon, when they get here, we're really looking forward to that unpacking of the Word where we take stories of encounters with Jesus and we delve into them and we find out what is God saying to, to us through these things, through these encounters. But there are many of them. And what I want to point out to, tonight is the diversity of that. Um, each encounter is different. The range of people that Jesus encountered it was vast. There's so many surprises in Scripture. When Jesus walks down the street, we know something's going to happen. <laughs> As you read through the Gospels, every narrative, there's a surprise. There's, a, there's an encounter. There's a, there's a significant something happening somewhere. And that's what it's like with Jesus. I, d I know many of you have experienced this as you've walked through your Christian life. Every day is an, an adventure in Jesus. He surprises us, doesn't he? And I want us to just uh, look at a few, few, few of these. Looking at the life of Jesus, even as an infant in a crib, we read Eastern. Now, uh, in, in that I want you to understand foreign, okay? Magi or wise men, and shepherds were drawn to him in a crib, a baby. And in that moment, there was an encounter with him that led these people gathered to worship and to lay gifts and to honor this person to whom they'd been drawn by God. Perhaps you are a foreigner Perhaps you're a wise man or woman or just a humble worker, a, hand, a, a, a farm hand or a laborer. You see, in the encounters that Jesus has, there's no race, there's no class, there's no language, there's no barriers. No matter who you are, that encounter is for you. Next, we, we, we notice that in, even in, in Jesus' childhood, he goes off on a, on a family excursion to the city. <laughs> now, I can just see this happening one day in my future. We go off to the city, and there, um, Jesus disappears. Next thing is, parents are frantic, I know the feeling. Um, looking for him, and they find him in the temple with all the cultural leaders of the day, the wise men, the teachers. And what do we observe? They're all in awe. They're all stumped. They're all wordless, the wisdom and insight that this young lad has. And perhaps you're in a position of authority or a teacher, or a learned person. Be prepared to be challenged by the truth that Jesus brings as you encounter him. So often we can feel that we've, we've reached a state of maturity or wisdom. Jesus surprises us by humbling us and bringing truth that shakes the foundations on which we feel we've built our lives. Isn't that true? As a man, he had encounters with so many. A Samaritan woman uh, uh, at a well. 
a tax collector up a tree, uh, a fish fisherman on the side of a lake, a young lady called Mary at a family meal, a paralyzed man lowered down through the roof of a, uh, of a house by some friends, a blind man at a pool desperate to be healed, a ranking Roman officer in his home, a woman bleeding in a large crowd reaches out and touches his cloak. See, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever your background, whatever your suffering, pain, sickness, whatever you're enduring, you too can experience and know an encounter with Jesus. No one is exempt. There are no barriers. Even on the cross, a murderer encounters the living God. Turns to Jesus and he receives forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. The resurrected Jesus comes to a man who's just betrayed him. Someone who walked by his side for months and months and months, years. And he encounters Jesus again with grace and mercy for his shame. Are you carrying shame? Is there an obstacle in your life that's preventing you from experiencing freedom and joy that Jesus can bring? Are you troubled by guilt, depression, mental illness, fear? You see, Jesus overcomes all of these and more on the cross. And he conquers death so that we can freely encounter him in the midst of our struggles. Dear friends, Jesus is available. He loves encountering you. He loves to meet us where we are. Even the ascended Jesus, alive in the heavens, appears to a man who's adamant to destroy this group, this new thing, this, this, this Christianity thing. A man who's on the road with a purpose to a town called Emmaus encounters Jesus. And on that road, Saul, who's later called Paul, encounters the very person he set out to crush. And we all, then, we all know Paul's story from then. He goes on to change the, 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 the known world with the gospel. Perhaps you feel strongly about some injustice. Perhaps you're, you're concerned about the way society is heading. Maybe you genuinely peed off at this world and perhaps your parents. Is it possible that you've missed the ultimate cause? One based on the grace and love of a 100% good God? One who is not absent, one who is by his very nature, uh, who by his very nature gives us identity and purpose and hope? Right now, you can encounter that Jesus. Your heart can be changed from the frustrations and, the, and the, the things that press in from us on us from this world to be liberated and set, set on fire for the purposes of God. You too can know that delight, identity, knowledge of who you really are. You too can know that kind of freedom. So 
So how do we do this? And I've just got three things to mention, and then I'll be done, I promise. I'm not going to keep you very long tonight. It's, it's been a long day getting here, and we, we're all quite tired, and we'd love to go and put our heads on our pillows and wake up tomorrow to a great breakfast and some fantastic fellowship. But I want, I want us to, to note these three things. This is why we're here. We're here to encounter Jesus. And how can we make the most of that? How can we prepare ourselves for that? What can we do? First of all, I want to say, first thing we can do is just come as you are. Just be who you are. The problem is we can come with pride. We can come with a set of values that we think are very good. Or we can come without a sense of entitlement, just as we are, humbly, and say, God, here I am. You made me, you fashioned me, you know me better than myself. Come and meet me where I am. In all my struggles, in my sadness, in my sickness, in my grief, come and meet me just as I am. And I encourage you to do that this weekend. Secondly, I want, you, I want to remind you of his character. And I want you to remind yourself of his character. How can we do that? Well, I just love the songs we've sung tonight. They just lift up the character of God. Sing those songs to yourself. Love the scriptures that we've read. Each of us has a, has a word of God somewhere on us, I'm sure. Plow yourself into the word. Read what it says about his character, this glorious God, the reason we've gathered, the reason we're alive. Get to know a bit more about him. That's how we can prepare ourselves to encounter him even more. Okay? And thirdly, press in. Press in. With faith, press in. In this life, we will face troubles. That, that's not me saying that. <laughs> um, I'm qu quoting the scriptures there. Okay? In this world, you will have troubles. Change and new seasons can often feel overwhelming and uncertainty can creep in. You're feeling a bit insecure, a bit unsettled. Maybe things have happened this past year that have left you wondering. See, in these stories that we read in the, in the Gospels, there are many people who are in similar situations, and we see many of them reaching out, calling out to Jesus, seeking Him, touching Him. There's no need to be ashamed of our need to encounter Jesus. There's no need to be ashamed of your need to encounter Jesus. Okay? There's no shame. Tell him you need him. Reach out in your heart. Cry out to him. Declare your dependency on him. Dependency on his presence. And allow him to reach into that part of you that really is desperate for more. We're all, we're all vessels. We all carry his likeness. We all carry his spirit. But we all have a tendency to leak. And this weekend, we are going to make plenty of time to come and drink and soak and be in the presence of Jesus. Amen? So, Carolyn, you have freedom. Um, 
please, I, I appeal to you. Come just as you are. Remind yourself of his character and press in with faith. There's no obstacles. There's no barriers. Just come as you are. Amen. Can we do that? Can we say yes? Can we stand together and let's just uh, pray out from where we are? Let's begin to do that reminding ourselves of God's character. Let us start by, by, by reaching out to him and saying, Lord, here I am. Just as I am, I come. Come, Lord. You can, you can start praying out right where you are. Jesus, meet with me. Come and touch me again. Come, Lord. Come, Jesus.